Hello everyone, and welcome to this Blender tutorial. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to put together this scene here. Now, we won't be making this gun. This gun here is the result of my tutorial series on Victory 3D. But it's okay, you can use any gun that you want. In this tutorial, we will be taking a look at how to integrate uh, Megascan into your workflows. These boxes here, all of them are from Megascan. Megascan has been integrated seamlessly, seamlessly with EV render and uh, Cycle Blender as a render here. So we will be, uh, we'll be looking uh, into that, and we're gonna be building this map here. And then put put this gun in to make some uh, lightings and finish up the render. With that says, let's make some preparation. First off, I want you to go to Polygon and download a paper texture. We're gonna be using some of each uh, of some of these two texture here. We're gonna use the normal map from this. And also this. With those two, we're gonna create this bumpy folded line here. And then head on to Google and search for a map that you like. I'll just search for Victorian London map. Let's find one that is big, very big, because our render is rather big. And the map takes up a good chunk of the render. We need a HD map, in case uh, someone wanna zoom in like this. So let's just hit the large size map, find the large size map. And I believe for my render, I use something big like this one here. Which is 6000 by 4500. So go ahead and download that map. And finally, You can head to HDRI Haven to get some HDRI for our gun. The HDRI is free, so thanks to the creator of this HDRI here. And find something indoor. We're gonna render our gun indoor. If you want to do it outdoor, that's fine. That's uh, up to you to figure out the lighting setting for it. That says. Let me show you around the scene for that render. So this is the scene with all the HDRI and lighting in place. We're gonna be recreating the scene. So first thing first, work with the map, shall we? So this is the map I was talking about before. Now it looks uh, relatively clean. I want my map to look a uh, I want my map to look like this, a bit dirty, with some dirt stain and some liquid, say cafe or tea, they like tea over there in Britain, and they have a mark like this, because this render is called the heist. This person, the owner of this gun here, is planning a heist in this location, so I want this map to be look used, and old, and gritty. So that says, Let's make some changes for this map. One more thing I would like you to prepare. Once again, back to Polygon. They have some very good imperfection map here for the 
stain of rain, fingerprint, dirt, swipe, and everything. Try to find a few that you like and you and uh, use them as I do in this video. With that says, I'm gonna use some of my favorite. First up, I want some fingerprint in it, so I'm gonna use the smudges large here. Just drag it in and scale it in place. Just like that. Now I'm gonna create a fill, solid color, and I'm gonna use uh, this. I'm gonna use this uh, map here as a mask. So I'm gonna select all the pixel here. Hit Control C to copy, and I'm going to the mask here into the channel and paste it. Now I can delete this. Oh, let's deselect them, uh, them under selection first and delete this. Look at the mask is inverted. Let's hit Control I on the mask here. Okay. Now this solid color here will control the color of the fingerprint. Now that now that all we have to do is bump up the contrast here. So let's hit Control M and let's bump up the contrast. So let's just bump up the contrast now. I'll temporarily turn the color to red so I can see them. Ah, like that. Now let just the contrast of the mask here. Maybe something not too strong. Like this, it should be fine. And I'm gonna select some brownish black color for it. So that it look more dirty. And like that should work. Now our render is very big, so all the fine detail in this texture right here will be seen. That. Now I'm, I'm gonna go add in some more effect. The second effect I'm gonna layer is the stained liquid uh, here. I'm gonna create some dried up coffee or tea or something with this texture here. So let's drag it in. Once again, let's drag it in place. Let's rasterize it. And I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times. To cover the whole map. Like so. And then I'm gonna select the pixel here and hit Control c and do the same. I will add in a solid color and paste what we copied into this map here, into this here. And you can, we can hit Control and i to invert. Now we can get rid of the, the texture here. Delete layers. I'm gonna use something orangey, dark, and yellow for the tea. For the tea. Let's use this for now. Maybe we can invert the mask. Yeah, that's better. Now let's adjust the color a little bit. Make it stand out. I can do some spot over here. Maybe we try to we need to bump up the contrast once more. Uh, 
I'm starting to see something here. That should be good. Make the map equivalently yellowish and dirty. For the composition of our gun to work, we have two compositions here. First, the rule of third. So the center of our wheel should be here, and here, and here, and here. Also, there is a diagonal uh, view here. So the, the cross should be some here, some somewhere here. So let's add in another solid color. Make it red this time. I'm gonna invert the mask to nothing at the moment. Let's add in our red cross somewhere around here. I will grab a brush that is somewhat random. That should work. Now let's find our victim. So it seems like we had a station here. So let's say we drop at about here, this building here. So let's hand mark it red there. And now for the for the now let's plan our approach. So we start around here. I'm holding shift to create a straight line. And we go to here. And then into the alley here. Then approach the target. Afterward. Let's escape to the part here. So let's make some dot. And then spread out. That would be our brilliant uh, plan of action. Now let's save the map. Blender can read the Photoshop file just fine. So let's save it at like this. So that we can make adjustment later if we need to. Now I will close out the demo scene here and let's open up a new blender. So we have our default scene here. I can, I'm gonna collapse the timeline first. And I'm gonna append the gun that I already finished shading and everything. I'm gonna delete the cube here. So I already do all the shading and material work for this gun, so it's ready to go up the bat, right up the bat. And I can control my gun with the empty here, because it make up uh, very many components, a lot of components. So I can just post them quickly with the empty like this. So you can do the same for your gun. Let's head on to Mega Scan Bridge. Now we are in Mega, Mega Scan Bridge. If you click in Export Settings here, Mega Scan has a option to export to Blender here. It only works for Blender 2.8 and up, so you can hit download plug in here. And Mega Scan will download the script for the plug into Blender. After all that's done, you can just hit export and your selected asset of choice, which just should right to uh, Blender. With access, I'm gonna send some access over to Blender. Let's send over this wooden crate first. I'm gonna look into the export setting. 4K resolution, JPEG. Oh, seems good. Export to Blender. Before we export the Megascan asset to Blender, we're gonna quickly turn on the. We're gonna turn on uh, quickly turn on the. Megascan Lightning add-on here. 
Click that. And now we can hit export. And our item should be sent straight to Blender. My gun is 10 times the normal scale. For the sake of uh, sculpting, let's scale down 10 times. So I'm gonna just S0.1. I'm gonna turn on the screen cascade here for you to follow. My gun is about 40 centimeter in length. Let's check out this box and see if it's realistic. We have our measurement here. I'm gonna adjust the unit here to centimeter. So 27 centimeter. That seems very not fine. Let's add in. Let's add in a uh, table first. So I'm just gonna add in a simple plane. Go to shading. I will select the table here and I'm gonna send over the shading for the table. So I have my assets here within the service. I'm gonna send over the table here. So I'm just gonna click on that and hit export. The materials should be in here. That would be the. Nope, that wouldn't plank here. Yeah. That's there. Now I'm gonna double check the texture here. Sometimes makers can get it wrong. Just gonna double check it. SRVG, seems good. Roughness, metallic. Normals. So all seems fine here. So I just add in a texture coordinate and a mapping node. To adjust the scale of the table. I'm gonna hold the left mouse and drag over the Y and uh, Z axis so that I can just type in all three coordinates as once. Let's try three. Yeah, that seems fine for now. Let's keep that. I'm gonna back to layout and start to position my gun. I'm just gonna let it lie on the table. Maybe split the screen so I can better see it at two angles once. Realistically, I'm thinking it's gonna lie. This portion over here should be heavier so that it would drag the gun back like this. Then it will balance on the tip over here and over here. So I think something like this. That. Now let's choose the position for our camera. First thing first, I'm gonna adjust the some setting of the camera here. Focal length, let's set it to 35. Which will be the focal length of your eyes, of human eyes. And for the settings here, let me find the composition guide. Over here, I will choose the rule third and maybe the golden triangle here. As I said earlier, this will be the center of attention. So we should put something over here and something over here. Over here should be the red cross that I talked about earlier. Speaking of the red cross, we're gonna put the map in as soon as we figure out where to put the camera. So I turn on the... Let me find this view here and click 
lock camera to view here. To put the gun, to put the camera into perspective. Let's focus on our gun. So that I put the gun uh, parallel to the coordinate triangle here. Somewhat parallel is fine. I want the gun to be the center of tension. So I just put the camera like this, I think. Now that I see the wood up close, I will unlock the camera now. So that we won't be moving it uh, around anymore. And let's go back to shading and increase the style of the wood some more. I think it's about it. It's good, maybe. Maybe seven. Yeah, let's keep it to seven. Now, as a another composition thing, I want the table to end about here, so that we have our table ledge over here, and we can look all the way down into the ground here. So without, so that we can have a better sense of depth for our render. So I will click on the table here. Go into edit mode and add a single edge loop here. And I'm gonna stop as around here. And let's delete this vertex here. Now the table should be over there. Let's send over some plank to cover up the edge of the table here. I will return to 3D assets. I have some plank ready. So I just hit export. Our plank is nicely important to Blender. So let's just place them. I'm gonna move them out of the way. Maybe spread them out thin so I can better see them. Now I'm gonna find one with a nice size so we can turn uh, rotate it up at the edge of our table. Yeah, let's choose this one. So the edge of our table is over here. I'm gonna put it right here. Now we're gonna move it in. Now we have the edge of our tables. I'm gonna hide the others for now. In case we need it again. I'm gonna move to a new collection. Let's call it archive and hide them. I'm gonna hide them in render as well as well. So now we only we only have our gun here. Next up, let's add in the map. So I'm gonna hit shift A image as plane. And I'm going to select the map. So we have our map loaded in. Let's just keep it at that for now. We're going to add in some uh, displacement texture for it. I'll scale it down. And I will check the scale. The, the measurement, I mean. So is about half a meter wide so i say it's pretty realistic for now so I'd apply the scale put it in place i'm gonna tilt them a bit like this 
So that looked a bit more interesting. And I replace the X right over here. That is good for now. Let's populate our scene some more. Correct. Let's put the box here in the table. This black line right here is a table. Let's just move it up it a little bit. Too much clipping would move, would make your scene look a bit weird. So let's keep it minimal. I'm gonna put it over here so that it's uh, stop uh, the eye from wandering up the frame. Let's hide it a little bit. And I'm gonna move locking the Z axis. Rotate it a little bit. I want to see a corner of it in a render, so I can put it some put put some bullet in it. That is as a bullet crate. Let's move it in a little bit further. Now let's duplicate our bullet here. OT and clear parent. That's just way too big. Scale down 10 times. I will put 3 over here so that we can properly see the bullet in the render. The tail here, the head, and the body. So I'm just gonna rotate it like this. I'm gonna put it right about here. Put it on the table. I'm gonna duplicate it and rotate by 90 degrees. Rotate by 90 degrees on the axis, x axis. Now let's put the bullet on the table. Realistically, the bullet should be lying like this because it would have two touching points here. Just put that on the table, move it like this. This bullet here will show up the head. This one here is the body. So we will have one more for the head tail. So you can see all like that. I'm gonna move this a little bit over here. That should be good. Now let's make some, let's fill up the crate with some bullet on the portion here. I will duplicate this one. Put it in. Give it a random rotation. And repeat some more. OT, rotate. Sometimes we're gonna wanna rotate both and uh, two like this using median point. Sometimes individual, or individual origin is better. So we just work our way through. Lower it down. A couple more time we should have our crate ready. I'm using the eyeballing tool, which will be you can double tap R to you to rotate, freely rotate the bullet like this. Let me check that. I see two clipping here. As I said, too much clipping would make your render look less convincing. Because real light object don't clip. Just a couple more and we can fill up the section over here with bullet. 
just will take the tail up. One more time. I'm going to move them, lower them a little bit. So, that should be that corner done. Now let's send over some more prop. I will send over the candle here. Let's move it in place and check the shader. Looks like O is okay. Sometimes, sometimes, Mega Scan uh, can mess up your metallic here. So it would send an object with one metallic like this, and it would look very odd. So be sure to double check. Now let's send over some more prop. I would choose the container here. And we have our container. Once again, all Megascan objects are up to scale in real life. So you can just send them uh, over without having to worry that they will miscale something. And since my gun is also uh, realistically, realistically scale, 40 centimeter from the hilt from the handle to the knob muzzle. Make it make the layout of the scene a bit more easy. That says let's spread out the item that we have. And once again I will check on the shading. There we go. These objects should not be metallic. Let's just dial them down, and already you can see them looking a bit better. So now I'm just gonna place this item. Let's put it this box over here, and turn it good size, facing our render. So I will move this up. Like about there, it have some corners like this, so it should be a little bit above the table, like this. And I will put the candle on top. Ah, oh, it's a bit out of focus of the camera. That's okay. A bit, a little bit of sacrifice. Put the, this box over here. Tighten it a little bit. Make sure they don't clip. And properly sit on the table. I will use this can here to Maybe this big box here to block the corner. Downward a little bit. Now we will rotate the candle a little bit so that it's it like this. And I think I will put this can over here and lie this down. This one somewhat redundant. Let's just move it in like this. Now 
Now we can move on to further, we we'll need to work further on the map here. Let's isolate it and go into shading. First off, I will use a principal shader. I mean, principal PSDF for the texture of the map. Generally speaking, the principal shader is better. Now I will add in a normal maps. With all the texture coordinate in place. And I will choose the paper folded number one that I told you to prepare earlier on Polygon. So I just select that. I'm gonna unplug the color for now so that I can check on the normals here. A bit too big. Let's scale it by 4. So it's small. How about 2? 3 should be good. Give our map a little bit more definition. So let me show you the before and after. We hit, we plug in the normal map. It looks a bit like this. Already a very big improvement. But we can go a little bit further with the map. A couple more steps further, I mean. So next thing, I'm gonna... Add in some more geometry. We're gonna then replace this map. So we're gonna need some more geometry. And also, after the deplace, I will doing some fine tweaking for the, the corner of the map. So that we need some more geometry. So let's hit subdivision service at one level. Optimal the uh, subdivide and simple. And I'll choose the simple operation here. Now I will choose a displace modifier. Hit on new with the UV texture coordinate and I will click on this icon here it will take me to the texture tab down here so I can link in a texture for the deplacement and I will choose this one paper folded number 6 displacement 60 bit 16 bit I will choose that and we have our texture folded. I will turn the color space from RGB to linear. And that should improve our displacement a little bit. Before we do anything else, let's turn down the strength. Say smooth. And let's adjust the scale on the displacement. I will repeat it a couple of more times. Maybe like that. And add in some more subdivide so that we can better see our texture. That is too much. Let's cut it by half. That's better. But not quite there yet. I will tune it down a bit. This step it, uh, is all up to you. How many fold do you want? is entirely upon you. 
I think I will in decrease the strength a little bit more. Something like that should be good. Now let's bring everything back. Now let's make sure that the map properly sit on the table. I'll move it down. And for this crate over here, I will move it up so it will avoid the uh, intersection like this. Move that a little bit over here. The gun should be good. And for the bullet, let's move it to somewhere without the fall. That should be good. And now, save. And we're gonna do some final edit for the map. I'm gonna add in a shape key. Turn on edit with one value. What shape key does, it is say it will shape it will save the various stages of your models. So if you do some editing and you wanna come back, you can do that. Let me show you. I will turn on these two so I can see a place mesh within the object edit mode. Now let's turn on proportional editing. It's good. Now I will re manually remove the intersection here by moving it up. Gonna move this up. Now I'm gonna reposition the bullet and keep working on the map. Just just U G and Z, Z to move it up until there is no more clipping. Clipping is bad. Clipping is bad. Just move this down. Seems like we have no other choice. So it's fine. We can move this box up. That should be take care of the clipping. One more spot over here. And let's move this box. Like that. Now, what shape key does is, is save out the stages of your model. So this is before you edit it. This is after. For after. And now Let's do some more editing with the map. Now, normally the map uh, would be current, the paper would be crawling up like this if you use them too much. So, for the sake of realism, let's add in those curves. I select the very tip here, turn the pivot point to 3D cursor, and I'll place it here. Now let's rotate it. I will rotate it once, reposition the cursor, and do this again. That should be good. Now I will do it a couple more times. Maybe turn the Center here to protect it from view so that it we can turn rotate like this. Now turn the view point to individual origin, and I'm gonna move this edge up so that it don't clip in the table.
seems like we don't see it uh, so if we don't see the actual crap on the map in the render that's okay that's okay we can always do more render extra render to show up the hard work that we put in the curve on the map right here that Maybe I will use the render as cut moon clock here. It make uh, the transition a bit smoother. Now let's add in a single solidify modifier. So that the shader won't go too crazy around the edges of the map here. Let's make it super thin, paper thin. Pun intended. And that should be our scene ready for lighting. Before we go into the lighting uh, and render setting, I'm gonna adjust the EV render setting here. Because I'm gonna use uh, EV for loop dev, loop development. I'm gonna use it to adjust the lighting and the HDRI. So let's adjust the setting. I'm gonna go into color management here and choose a medium contrast look. And maybe check on the simplify here. And screen space reflection and ambient occlusion, which I already uh, turned on. So those should uh, be helping us figure out our settings. Now let's add in the HDRI. The juicy stuff. I think this scenes here look already look pretty okay. But uh, for this gun, this gun is the steampunk, so it should look uh, pretty vintage. So I'm gonna choose setting with a HDRI with uh, some what, what yellowish and bright color so that it look in the so it would so that it would capture the vintage look this step is relatively fun so I would have recommend you try out some some variation of lighting you, you can get all the lighting you can uh, you can ever think of on HDRI Haven so just head on there and get yourself a dozen of HDRI also but for me, I have the perfect, perfect one in mind. So I just, just add in a environment texture. Texture coordinate. And mapping ready for action. I'm going to choose this one here. This one is uh, a church from Marvel Toolbag. And I will turn on scene light and scenes work here. So that we can see our lighting. It's a church. But it's okay. It's to emit some pretty good lighting onto our scene here. Already that look pretty good to me. But uh, we're gonna do some more work on it. I'm gonna click on the camera here. And maybe increase the pass out here, so that we can focus on our scene let's try some water rotation of the lighting HDRI will allow you to capture the fine reflection of the metalness here and somewhat glossy surface like this varnished wood and metals so definitely, so next time you render your car or a sword, remember to add in a HDRI, HDRI so you, the metal can capture some reflection. It would make your render look that much better. Let's try this angle, maybe. Yeah, this is good. We have some reflection here and here. So I have, I'm happy with that. 
Let's keep that. And maybe we can move the camera a little bit. Now that I have all our lightings, I can see that the gun is a bit off. So just make it the center of uh, attention again. Maybe something like this is good. And we don't have to move a thing up our thing. Now let's do the final thing for our render here. I'm gonna add in some more light source. To improve on our scene, our scene here, we look way too yellow. We have too many yellow things going on here, from the gun to the map to the bullet to the feather lining itself. So we we need to balance it out a little bit. So I will add in some spotlight. Let's just say. I no, forgot the church, uh, the mosque, uh, the church over here. Let's just say we are in a dark room in the night with some yellow ish kind of light or just like bulb light everywhere. So it, so it would cast uh, some orangey and yellow color on our scene. Now we're gonna add in a single window. The window that would cast the light blue light, uh, light from the sky. And it would hit our gun like right here, so that it would it would balance out our light. So I would choose a blue skylight, like this. Maybe increase the strength a little bit. I will focus the light on the gun only. So that's better. Let me show you the before and the after. Before. Before. After. And also the like help uh, bring help bring out the texture of our map here. A little bit too intense, I would say. So I just dial down the strength of the normal maps. I go into the object shader settings and cut the normal map in half. So the shadow would look easier on the eyes. Maybe turn down the displacement a little, a little bit too. That's good, let's keep that. Before we call it done, let's add in one more light source to highlight our handle over here. I'm gonna add in a spotlight. Focus, focus is on over here. Let's just say it does spotlight overhead of our characters. So it hang about this. There. Let's give it a orangey yellow color. So. And adjust the power. Let's keep it uh, strong for now so that you can eyeball the color of the light. Let's choose something like this. Turn down the cone. I would like to highlight this area only. Like that. And turn the strength way down. Maybe increase the cone and maybe increase the blend so that the light would warm look to our place and if you want you can uh, you can say that 
this kind of light is lit so we can add in a point light put it just on top of the candle give it a yellowish color and adjust the strength but too many like salt will make our scene look somewhat more distracting so this like salt here is entirely optional you can add it in you can delete it but in my case i will delete it so i would end up with my scenes here let's down down this cross over here it look too distracting it's too uh, too much I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop and edit it. So let's dial down the cross over here. I'm gonna choose a darker color. First and foremost. Then let's try that. Save. Go back to Blender. I'm gonna go into the shading. Select the map. Hit N here to bring up this uh, this tab, and I'm gonna hit refresh. Now keep your eye on the cross here, and I'm gonna hit refresh right now. And it darker. Let's update the texture, and that should be our scene done. All the left to do is seeing this scene is uh, only for look depth. We're gonna do the final render in cycles. So I turn the render engine into cycles and use the GPU. I will choose a thousand samples and let's look into some setting for our render. I mean the render type. I'm gonna turn on the noising and as for the other pass, I'm gonna take the ambient occlusion tab. Uh, pass maybe the mist and that's all the all the paths I'm gonna use for the dimension I will use uh, the default dimension which will be 1912 and 1080s but for you you can uh, choose uh, whatever dimension you want post processing and just leave it at that Thousand sample for the light pad. I will. You may want to turn this to up if you don't want uh, your image to look too noisy. But I will leave it at that. Leave it as well. For the simplified, I will use 10 IO bound at most. If you leave it at zero, 0, it will make the IO bound infinitely which we will really taxing on your render time so I'm gonna use only 10 10 is way more than you ever need anyway and with that, let's hit render now that our gun is finished rendering already you can use the the render result for your purpose because it uh, pretty much look good enough for me but if you want some extra icing on the cake Stick around a little bit more as I go into compositing. I'll use shift click to bring it uh, in the background here. Let's try and use the alpha bar pass here. I'm gonna add in a mix RGB. And let's try multiply. Now, I mean occlusion is usually very strong, so do use it with care. Now I will add in a glare node. I will collapse this right here so we have more space. Let's use fog low high. I'm just gonna do some basic 
the Bazeta node layer here. Nothing too crazy. So let's keep that. So I will stop it there. Now let's take the uh, render result out. And we're gonna, just gonna do one simple edit here. And the render result should be update. There, we have our layer here. Now, if, you, uh, if you're working on a simple image like this, I would recommend you do, uh, do all the vignette, all the up chromatic aberration, and the color grading. You should do it in Photoshop. Because one, it's faster. Two, you can revert the edit at any time. So do it in Photoshop. And if you do it in, uh, if you were rendering an animation, then you have, would have no choice than to work in Compositor. But for my image, I would work the next part in Photoshop. So I just save it at the PNG. And work on it in Photoshop. Now let's add in a symbol vignette. I will add in a new layer. Pick a solid black color. And draw on the four edges. A block of color like this. And then I'm gonna use Gaussian blur to blur them up. Like that and adjust the opacity as I want. And once again, as for the color share grading, you should do it in Photoshop here, because you can always revert the color grading that you want. I will take a hue star saturation and play with it a little bit. And we drag down the saturation a little bit to make give it a cold and vintage look. Something like that. And maybe a curve to adjust the contrast a little bit. I will keep it simple and keep it uh, and stop at this. And it will be our final result. Thank you for watching this tutorial. And subscribe if you uh, want to see more in the future. And good luck on your project.